In this video, I'm going to show you how you can optimize your model by removing your unused columns and measures using the measure killer. We're going to look at it from the very beginning. So how to install it, how to get started, and a few things to bear in mind if you want to start using it. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the Measure Killer by Bruner BI is an external tool that you can install in your Power BI desktop, which basically lets you identify and delete any of the unused columns and measures that you have in your model. And I know that in its more recent iterations, it has a lot more features, you know, being able to connect online. But for my purposes of kind of using it, uh, the offline version and the free version is actually more than enough for most of my cases. To get started with it, you need to download and install the external tool, uh, which you can do from the Brunner BI website. So this is the website. I'll leave a link to this uh, in the description box below. So all you need to do is go to the free download section, which will just take you to that section. And from here, you just simply download the measure killer admin, uh, install it and restart your Power BI desktop. And once you're successful in installing this external tool, you should be able to find this under the external tools ribbon at the top where you'll be able to select and use measure killer. So the report that I have opened right now is the very typical Northwind data sets that we usually use in a lot of these demos. And what I've done is I've already created a few things like measures and some visuals that we will try to, to demonstrate how to use the measure killers on. So let's say we have a scenario in which we are given a Power BI report and we are tasked with cleaning it up or at the very least, optimizing it by removing some of the things that are not being used in any of our visuals. So you might have measures that you've created, but you don't use it anymore, or maybe columns that uh, exist in your model, but you don't actually use it in any calculations. So the best practice is to remove or delete a bunch of these things that you don't use for, for visuals or for calculations in order to reduce the size of your semantic models. So to get started with the measure killer, you simply click on it from the external tool ribbon. This will open up a separate window where you'll be able to customize what you want to do with this external tool. So here, as I mentioned, there are a few options that you can use. We have some disabled features here, which are, you know, being able to connect to the tenant directly. However, in our case, we just simply need to use it for offline use, which will be the single reporter data sets. And then from here, it will just uh, find the semantic model that we have open, which where we opened the, the, um, the external tool from, and we'll simply hit next. So this is the window for the measure killer. From here, what we need to do is we need to hit run. And there you go. So just from this page, you can gather a lot of kind of information or some insights on how your semantic model is and any of kind of these things, columns and measures that are not really used. So looking at this main window here in the middle, you can see that it lists out all of the different data elements that we have in our semantic model, the different columns and calculated columns that we have. And what it's highlighting at the moment are the columns or measures that are basically not used in any of the visuals. So as you can see, it says it's unused here and you can see how much size it takes in your semantic model. So if you want to analyze and see how much difference or how much optimization it will make for deleting these, this is a very good place to start. So the ones that are not highlighted are obviously the ones that are used. And if you expand on them, you'll be able to basically see where they're being used in the actual report. So for example, category name, as you can see, it's telling us that it's being used in a visual and it's being used in a clustered bar chart. And if you have your visuals named kind of appropriately, you'd be able to pinpoint exactly where this visual is or, or this column is being used based on the visual name that is shown here. If you want a more summarized view of kind of your execution, you have this summary here at the bottom, which just gives you a quick summary of, you know, how much in total a lot of your unused uh, columns and measures take up in your semantic model. 
you know, some other information about your, your relationships, uh, any of the measures, date tables. And it's a very good way to kind of get a quick glance over kind of how your semantic model is. But if you prefer a more kind of visual representation of how your data is represented, I like to use this uh, tab called plot results, which uh, lets you select a uh, different plots to show kind of how your model is laid out. So um, a few ones that I really like to visualize are the unused versus used. So if you kind of want to see them in scale, this is actually a really, really nice thing to, to have. Or there's also this one, data set absolute size by status. So it just gives you uh, in total how how big the used versus unused sizes for a lot of your um, columns or measures. So how do you actually use this external tool to kind of kill your calculations or, or columns? So let's go to the kill measures and calculations tab here. And as you can see, it's giving us a few things that we could potentially delete. Um, so all you need to do from here is select the column or measure that you want to kill and then just simply hit kill selected. Now, what is listing here, I believe by default are the ones that are not used. So um, you shouldn't really need to worry about, you know, um, killing a measure that uh, is not being used. However, there is one note to bear in mind, specifically around measures and killing them uh, that I'm going to cover a little bit later in this, in this video. But for now, uh, just to show you how it works, I'm just going to hit kill selected. And there you go. So we just simply get this status uh, window saying that it's been removed. So now if we close this window, you should not be able to find the quarter calculated column anymore because we've deleted it. What if you want to delete columns in your data tables before it actually gets loaded into the semantic model to save you some space? You can also do it using this external tool. So if you click uh, measure killer once again. Let's go single report once more, hit next. We'll hit run from here. And then we're going to go to the kill columns tab here. So the kill columns tab basically lets you select a specific table in your semantic model. And it essentially copies those query steps that you have. And towards the very end, remove those columns that you don't use for visualization. So this is uh, basically just adding those extra steps for you to remove the columns uh, that you might not want to load into your semantic model. So let's take one of these examples. So let's, uh, we already have selected the products. And as you can see, it's created a, uh, an M, M code here that we can copy and paste. So we'll simply select copy new M code from here. We'll close measure killer. We'll go to transform to open up Power Query. And where we have products, because that's the M code that we're copied from, we'll select advanced editor. And from here, we'll just simply copy, uh, uh, select all and paste. And as you notice, there, there's only one step that got added here, which is uh, this step where the measure killer basically removed a, a bunch of these columns that we don't use for visualizations. So if you hit done and hit close and apply, your table should only be loading columns that are being used in your dashboards. So I think this external tool is really great and they're not actually sponsoring me to, to, to do this video. I just, I just really like using this um, just because it saves me a lot of time optimizing my semantic model. But just one thing to bear in mind, if you use a lot of kind of conditionally formatted uh, properties like changing colors in your visuals based on certain uh, calculations or measure values, is that this tool doesn't really recognize the use of those measures in those conditional formatting settings. So let's start by first creating a new measure here. We're going to call this a uh, color and we're going to just change this or we're going to add the black string to this. And what we'll do is basically go to one of these visuals, change the bar color based on the value that we have in this measure. And usually it's a lot more kind of verbose than this, but for now, uh, we're not gonna add any kind of rules or if statements here. We'll simply just change the color of these bars based on what the value is of this measure. So if we say it's it's red, for example, 
it's now hooked up to the color of the bar. But watch what happens when we go to the measure killer external tool. So since we're using that measure color in our kind of in our visualization, because we're using it as a conditionally formatting measure, if we try to run the measure killer, what you'll notice is that the color will be highlighted as you can see here, that it's not being used, even though we are actually using it in our visuals. And this is just a warning to make sure that you're always checking that your measures or your calculations that you're using is, um, is something that you're not using for conditionally formatting properties in your dashboards, because it's not recognized by this measure killer. So in this case, for example, if we decided to kill color, for example, and uh, let's say it succeeds, let's see. Yeah, so it succeeds here. It says that it's removed. Now, if we go back to our report here, you will notice that like it doesn't break, but it does give you an error. And that, that reference that we have to that is now having a problem like this. So just one thing to bear in mind. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to start using this measure killer to optimize your semantic models. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.